has made, we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Richard Dobbs, I'm pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube or our podcast channel, do so at this particular time. And as soon as these messages become available to you, you can have them. Thank you so much for all of you who continue to support in your prayers and your finances and your just overall support, words of encouragement. We're so grateful for each and every one of you. Today, I want to come to you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and verse 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and verse 3. It reads as follows, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I want to talk to you from this topic. I must trust the Lord to keep me. I must trust the Lord to keep me. And before we go into today's word, let's have a moment of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for your many blessings. Thank you for your awesome word. Thank you for keeping us, God. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And we pray as these next few minutes, our hearts and our minds will receive what thus saith the Lord. We continue to bind the enemy and cast them out. And we speak peace and prosperity and the healing and deliverance and so forth into the lives of your people. Father, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. When I, in previous times I studied this particular scripture, I focused in more on the perfect peace aspect behind it. But in this particular time when I'm studying it, I, I, I found it powerful that God is keeping us. Oh, yeah, he's keeping us. He's guarding us. He's watching over us. He, he is protecting us and causing us to remain safe. And that, to me, is powerful when you think about it. God has the power to keep us. Power to keep us when things are going well. Power to keep us when we're challenging our body. Power to keep us when we're challenged financially. Power to keep us when we're not dealing with anything, but just the power to keep us. I, I pray that you hear what I'm saying is that God has power to keep us. And that to me says a whole lot. Because how can you have perfect peace if God can't keep you? And that's what we must trust, that God has the power to keep us. And in order for him to keep us, Isaiah says this, we must keep our minds stayed on Jesus. He, we got to keep our purpose and our intellectual framework on Jesus. I like why Isaiah puts it here. He says, in other words, I got to think and talk and act more in line with God's word. So in turn, I can be kept by all powerful God. I'm talking about a God that's power. I'm talking about God that is loving, a God that is kind, but a God that can do war all at the same time. And from when you keep your mind on Jesus, you, we must make a conscious decision to allow our purpose, our thinking, our meditating, and so forth to stay on Jesus. We need to learn, lean, lean on him, I should say, mentally and emotionally, and not on people, not on places, not on organizations, not on other things. We need to continue. Excuse me. We need to make sure our mind is stayed on Jesus. And when I see my mind drifting, I need to quickly repent and get my mind back on Jesus. And I believe that many believers can have the mind of Christ, but it's another thing, in my opinion, to keep your mind stayed or supported or leaning on Jesus. For example, I believe people can pray one or two times, but can they have a consistent prayer life? Because that's going to take determination. I believe people will give uh, one time or give when some, a, a particular cause tugs at their heart. But will they have a persistent life of giving God his tithes and his offerings? Because it takes courage and commitment to do something like that. 
I think anyone can, listen, I never say, I think anyone can get married, but staying married, that's a whole different ball game, isn't it? I believe that single people can be single, but can't they be single and say, I believe we can all do that. We keep our mind stayed on Jesus. I believe many people find the will of God for their lives, but it takes a lifestyle of hearing and applying God's written and revealed word to stay in the will of God for a year, for six months, for five years, for 10 years, for 20 years, and 30 years, and so forth until you meet Jesus one day. I believe it takes something to stay with Jesus. And I believe that God can help you, all of us to do that. But we have to keep our minds stay on Jesus. Notice what uh, Isaiah 26 and 3 promises us. You will keep him, notice this, in perfect peace. Oh, I love that about God. Perfect peace, safety, tranquility, and prosperity. To some of us who may not have much money, we may think that money is the answer to keeping peace in our marriage and at work and with the bill collectors, the daycare bill, the college loans and so forth. But quite the contrary, God's perfect peace is the answer because his safety, his tranquility, his completeness and prosperity can lead us to the money. In fact, it, God can do exceedingly abundantly above according to the power that working in us, which means he can lead us even to more money if we keep our mind and our focus in on Jesus. Perfect peace equates hearing, excuse me, hearing and apply God's word. So in turn, we can't receive healing, healing mentally as well as physically, deliverance, prosperity, tranquility, and so forth in the life of a believer. As we continue to trust God wholeheartedly, we will see these different aspects of God manifest. And I thank God that when we see it, we ain't got to be afraid. We ain't got to, we don't have to, listen, we need to cast our cares upon him for he cares for us. Why? Because we're focusing in on Jesus. And you know what I love about God? Lord, even when we mess up and even when we go astray, when we repent, God can get us back on folk, back on track, back on focus, back into the will of God for our lives. And then we can move on further. And let me say this here. It doesn't mean that every day, oh my God, it's going to be a day of tranquility. It's not every day. It's not going to be a, a day where everything is going wonderful. But we do believe that peace is going to be on the inside of us. Not, it may not be in the world around us. It may not be peace in your school, may not be peace in your home, may not be peace even in your church sometimes, but you got to have the peace that has us all understanding that will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're going to spend a lifetime. And let me say, a lifetime submitting to the will of God for our life, allowing the word, the, excuse me, allowing the Lord, his word, to be the major influence in our intellectual framework. So we allow God to renew our minds with the word of God, which is going to continue to keep us in perfect peace. That's why it's so essential to place our confidence in Jesus as our healer, as our deliverer, as our mighty God, as our prince of peace, as our miracle worker, as our strong tower, as Jehovah, as the great, greater one that lives on the inside of us. See, as we continue to do that, I believe God has the power. In fact, I know he has the power. A God can do all this, has the power to keep us. In my opinion, it's vitally important to trust in the Lord continuously, not just when it's crisis, not just when things are going well, but whatever goes on in our life, we trust the Lord wholeheartedly. We need a lifestyle of trusting God. That's why I think it's important that I'm going to give you what I consider uh, three biblical ways to help us to develop our trust in God. Help us to build, to construct, or to make stronger our trust in the Lord so we will stay in him. We will stay in Jesus. The first one is, is to trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and verse 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Again, trust. Lewis, feel safe, have confidence, be secure in the Lord. Not in us, not in our way of thinking and doing things, not in a corporation, not in the government, not in people, but trust in the Lord. And and lean, don't, don't, don't go your way. Don't be supported by your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Notice more than one paths. That what it lets me know there is that God wants you to trust him in every aspect of your life. Whether it's in school, your career, your business, whatever it is, God wants you to trust him in every aspect of your life. So we don't want to lean on our own understanding. The second one I'm going to talk to you about is to develop a lifestyle of prayer and pray with confidence. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now, this is the confidence. This is, listen, when we say we're confident, we are free and fearless to ask God according to his will. We have courage to obey God in every aspect of our lives. We have boldness to ask God for whatever it is he tells us to ask him for. Because we're doing it according to his will. Remember when Jesus prayed, he said, not my will, but your will be done. We want the will of the Father to be done in every aspect of our lives. We want the will of God to be done in our churches and, and in our relationships and so forth, in our finances as well. In our bodies, we want the will of God to be done. That's why we say by his stripes that we are healed, that sickness and disease has no place in our bodies. Develop, developing a lifestyle of prayer and praying with confidence. And the third one I'm going to talk to you about is this. Speaking the word with boldness to self and to others. Speaking the word with boldness to self and to others. Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word they may speak your word. So notice this. Now he said, now look at their threats and grant to your service, service with all boldness, with all freedom in speaking, causing us to be open about what we say about God. Give us the courage and the assurance that we may speak your word. Glory be to God. We want to speak his word. We want to build our reliance upon the Holy Spirit. And this is what boldness will do. It gives you a reliance upon the Holy Spirit. You want this Holy Spirit to continue to lead and to guide us into all truth. Now, I gave you three. Three, trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. Develop a lifestyle of prayer and pray, and pray with confidence and speak the word of God with boldness to yourself as well as to others. Now, you can definitely add to this list, but this is just a good list to continue to build our trust in the Lord. And we want to trust the Lord wholeheartedly. And it's evidence based on God's word that God has and he still has the power to keep us. And that to me is powerful. That to me is what's going to help us in our walk with Christ. Because I've learned over the years, and I'm going to close with my quick testimony and give you two quick questions. I thank God over the years. I haven't done things always right. I haven't always been the best brother or the best pastor or the best husband or the best father. But God still keeps me in the midst of all of that. 
And I know if God will keep me, he is not a respecter of person that God can keep you to. Listen, submit to God. Learn the art of repentance and continue to submit your will to his way for your life. And God can keep you to. God has the power to keep you. He has the love to keep you. He wants to keep you. And I know God will keep you. And then as you do, I want to leave you with this. Have we full, fully made up in our mind that we want to be kept by him? Let me say that to let me say that to you again. Have we fully made up in our mind that we want to be kept by Jesus? Something we must we must answer within ourselves. What do we want to be kept by Jesus? And will we trust him to keep us? Will we trust him to keep us? Despite, listen, I know when things are going well, you probably ain't got no problem with it, but when things don't go well, you feel like God has left you or forsake you, you say, God, you know what? I know you have not left me. You have not forsaken me. Woo! Do you want to be kept? Do you want to be kept? Because if you do, I know God has the power to keep you and he'll do it by his spirit. I must trust the Lord to keep me. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for your work. Thank you for keeping all of us, keeping my brother, keeping my sister. Not always easy to be kept, but Father, we know you got the power to keep us. And as you keep us, we can expect, God, for your deliverance, your healing mentally and physically, your deliverance, your or prosperity, and your protection. Thank you so much for me, God. How can we make it if we didn't trust you to keep us? So Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you, Lord. Well, if you have in the building area, come see us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. We're located at 3097 South Van Wood Road in Villarica, Georgia. Our announcer's going to give you information. If you'd like to send in your prayer request, we'll be happy to pray with you. And also, too, if you'd like to sow a seed into some good ground, this is the place where you to sow it in. The announcer will give you that information as well. Again, my name is Richard Dobbs. I'm pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, without division, the people perish. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to the Overcomers Christian Center website where you can find us located at OCCBR.org and we are under the direction of Pastor Richard E. Dobbs and First Lady Cassandra J. J. Dobbs and here at OCC our vision is empowering and equipping our world. To the right of the website you will find our social media pages and if you click on the media page you will find our weekly YouTube videos where you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel, as well as our weekly podcast that you can access by clicking this link right here. If you'd like to donate or give to the ministry, you may do so by mail, or if you'd like to donate online, you have two options. The first option is by clicking on the donate this donate button, which will lead you to the paypal.com website, or you may use the giving app. You can access the giving app by either texting GIVE to the phone number and following the directions, or you can download the giving app via Apple Store or Google Play. Thank you so much to your giving and your donations as it helps us to give to the ministry, give to the community, and share the gospel. If you'd like to send a prayer request, you may do so by filling the following information here to your right. And if you would like to visit our church, our weekly services are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And you may access the, the address and telephone number right here under the contact section. Thank you so much on behalf of Pastor and First Lady Dobbs. Be blessed.